Hello, I'm Hannah Maloney from Good Life Permaculture. I'm based in Moona country in Nipaluna, Lichwita, in the bottom of Australia. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to prune a young almond tree, which is just around two years old, so it hasn't had any major pruning yet. And now is the time to shape it, so in coming years, it fits the space well, it's got good air filtration and good fruiting patterns as well. Uh, let's get cracking. <laughs> There's lots of different ways of pruning fruit trees and today I'm going to show you how to prune one into the shape of a vase which basically means um, pruning it so you end up with this beautiful open shape here which allows lots of sun to come into it improving the yield of the tree and you get lots of air filtration so you're preventing disease and also uh, once it's mature it's really easy to get in there and harvest things so you're not kind of clambering around and getting sticks in your eyes unnecessarily although that one's getting in my eye right now <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so when we're looking at a tree which hasn't been pruned, uh, we can see lots of different things going on. We're looking for three to four main leader branches which will form the skeleton of the tree. And that you roughly want them to be pointing north, south, east, west. Not exactly, but I just I say that so you understand that you want them pointing away from each other. So I'm going to keep this little one here and I'm going to train it. I'll weight it down and I'll show you how later. Um, so it comes this way and then I'm going to, the opposite side of it, I'm going to be picking this main branch here and that's going to be going that way. And if I come on to the other sides, I'm going to keep this one and then on the opposite side of that particular branch is this one behind, I'm going to keep that one. So I'm going to be taking out two branches today, this one and this one will go because they're unnecessary and they're cluttering up that internal space of the tree. Um, while I'm at it, I'll cut out any dead wood, any wood that's crossing over towards the centre and make sure there's a nice flow as well. You'll also notice the branches that I've chosen along the main trunk are spaced out roughly 10 to 15 centimetres apart, sometimes 20 centimetres. Uh, that's because they'll be stronger if you space them. If I clustered all of the branches in one area, in the future, it's very, very likely that it's be too heavy and it'll split and the tree will be sad and you will be sad. <laughs> so space them out. And it won't always be perfect according to the textbooks, but close enough is usually good enough. With some of these uh, medium to larger branches, it's still quite small, but I, instead of cutting right on the trunk, I'll cut further away first so I can get rid of all the sap and then I can come back and do a cleaner cut and it's much much easier to get it accurately done. Yeah. I oh, also notice I'm cutting under first. That just means that when I cut up this way it, I can't I won't tear the bark so it won't drag the whole tree down. That's a nice little hot tip. Um, when I come to cutting it with my main saw, you'll see that this is the, this is a, the key trunk coming up. I don't want to cut on this side and I, I want to cut on this side of that space. And also ideally I want to get rid of any of these other little baby branches coming off. So today I'll be trying to cut in here in between those two areas. Um, keep, like, if you're a bit worried and freaking out, you can cut a bit further away and just maintain uh, attention, I guess, so you can prevent any of these branches here growing to become really big so you have to come back with second turns and cut them back and back and back again again and again <laughs> bit annoying so ideally you just get it right <laughs> now look I have gone a little bit closer than I would have liked to the trunk and that happens sometimes because real life happens and that's okay uh, this is not the end of the world I have a bit of tree paste here which you can use for um, covering wounds on trees when you're grafting or pruning. I usually just don't do it for smaller cuts but for medium or larger cuts where I'm worried about any um, disease occurring which usually comes when the water gets into the bark then I'll paint it up so that can seal it off. There you go. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> These longer shoots here are way too long. So we roughly take around two thirds off them and we think carefully about where we're cutting because you see these little bumpy things here, they're what we call nodes and that's where new branches can come out of. So we cut depending on which direction we want the plant to come out of. If I cut here, 
then above this area, this, this will send off a new uh, branch towards you, but I want to come away from you. So on the other side of the branch, I'm going to pick a new node here, cut above it, like so, and now that little node will send off a little baby branch which will one day become a main branch. While these branches are really young, they're really pliable. So it's a great time to do some uh, training. And there's lots of different ways of doing that too. But today I've got some star pickets in the ground and some gentle cloth, which won't strangle and break the tree. And I've pulled it down uh, to the point where it's still comfortable, but it means that I can train the branch out on a different angle to get more of that vase shape that I'm looking for. In wrapping up, this little young tree has had a drastic haircut today. Uh, we've got some bit of pacement to help those cuts heal and seal up nicely. But overall, we're really happy with how this has come, uh, come up. And in the future, we'll prune it slightly differently once it's more mature and it's fruiting. Uh, but right now, it's good to go. Hurrah!